The Sita Buddha 348 seated in the pensive pose and was fashioned in bronze. The 39.7 cm high statue was made in 338 AD, the late Zhao period, that is presently in the San Francisco Asian Arts Museum with number B60B1034S. The inscription on the back identifies it is equivalent to the year 338. This is the earliest date inscribed on any Buddha sculpture from China anywhere in the world. This sculpture was covered by gold by using a mercury amalgam except of the head. It was lacquered or painted black. We can find the traces behind the left ear. No pigmentation was detected anywhere else on the figure, but it may have worn off over time. There is a square protrusion sticking back of the head with a round hole in the middle. It suggests that something was once attached to the back of the Buddha, most likely an umbrella. In the front, we can see the piece have three circular holes which were attached to originally some description of him or most likely would have supported a pair of guardians lions on either side. The metal walls around pedestal are approximately 2 mm thick, but the thickness of the wall vary widely. The upper half, including the neck and head, is much thicker than the knees or the base. This degree of variation points to the use of a shaved down core that is associated with the use of a piece mold. The Buddha seated on the rectangle pedestal in a pensive pose, with legs crossed beneath a draping robe. Its hands are placed against the stomach instead of palms up on the lap. It has the typical features of the Buddha. There is a wavy hair arranged in an Ushnisha atop of his head, which represents the amount of brain power and knowledge it has. The characteristics of an Ushnisha are the hairlines in wave snape, carding up or backward, and there is a clear hairline between the upper and lower hairpins. However, the Ushnisha of the Sita Buddha 338 is different from the typical bun hair. We can see that the upper part of it is flat top and the head is higher. His hair is combed down and the hair is like a dropping bangs. The hairline is prominent and covers a wide forehead. Obviously, the invertedly hairline is divided into two parts in the middle of the forehead. The right side is parallel to the left side in a regular way. Also, its hairline has been sorted out. The front of the forehead has a hairline and distribution boundaries. There is no obvious forward trace we can observe from the Oshnisha of the Sita Buddha 338. The Buddha has not entirely been transformed yet into Chinese-looking deities. Their facial characteristics and clothes are instead markedly Indian. It was influenced by Buddhist sculptures of the ancient region of Gandhara, which include parts of present-day Pakistan, Afghanistan, and northwestern India in overall. Note its prominent nose, pointed chins, and its strong Gandhara-style clothing. It wears a wide sleeve over the shoulder coat. The clothes are dropped from the shoulders to the chest and then hanged to the past. The sleeves are on the lap and the pleats of the lower placket of the hand are the same as the chest. Looks like the vertical scale. In each of the details, the statue actually shows the Gandhara gnome. However, by looking at this Buddha, we can see that it's thin eyebrows and there's no beard on the upper lips. The statue's facial features and style point to a process of synesthetization. There are some Chinese traits that are visibly detectable. This sculpture is the earliest known data Buddha object produced in China data 338. This date, which is more than 400 years after Buddhism was conveyed from India to China via the Silk Road, makes it an important milestone in the development of Buddhist art in China. This Buddha is among the largest bronze sculptures to have survived from this period.